All right, everybody, got another album review for you. Uh, this is a band that, if you're into the tech death, um, death grind kind of uh, genre of uh, metal, and that's your uh, cup of tea, then you're probably pretty familiar with the band Origin. And I will be reviewing their uh, recently released album, and that is um, Unparalleled Universe. So let's get started. So the uh, album... Uh, Clocks in at 41 minutes, um, there's a total of 10 tracks, um, 9 of them original works, and the 10th, a cover of kind of cult death metal band um, Brujeria, which is a band that's uh, been around uh, since the early 90s and out of Mexico, they're uh, kind of a more of a cult death metal band, and I've had uh, members from different more, um, you know, well-known uh, bands, uh, such as... Um, you know, uh, Napalm Death, um, Carcass, and, you know, band guys from At, you know, At The Gates, Arch Enemy, even Billy Gold um, from uh, Faith No More played bass um, on one of the albums. So, yeah, it's kind of a, an interesting band. All of the uh, names of the guys in there are supposed to, it's supposed to be like a kind of a... A spoof on like Mexican drug lords and uh, and serial you know Mexican serial killers or something. So it's it's kind of a kind of a weird cult band. But uh, yeah, the uh, the song that they cover is Revolution, um, and that's the uh, track that ends or you know is the last track on the album. So yeah, it's uh, under forty minutes, which works well for a band of this uh, caliber and this type of style. Um, where, you know, you don't want an hour, I mean, some people might, but, uh, given the intensity of the music, um, having it, you know, <laughs> reaching an hour's point without, you know, some significant, uh, experimentation and, uh, tempo changes and, um, rooms where th things are allowed to breathe, uh, can get a little bit overwhelming. Thankfully, the, uh, the band, uh, manages to, um, to achieve this within the, the time frame of the album. Uh, which is, which is good because like I said, a band like this, if they're, if you are basically going one speed, you know, regardless of how brutal, um, a band like Origin is, uh, if it's just constantly at one tempo pretty much throughout, uh, the actual, imp how impressive the, uh, the technical prowess and the ability to keep up that kind of intensity kind of, uh, kind of wanes a little bit because when you have, um, areas where you'll slow down quite a bit, um, or, you know, go from something that's just fren frenetic to, uh, something that's more of a hook, more of a groove type, uh, guitar riff, you know, even if it breaks things up for 10, 15 seconds, and then you go straight back into, you know, how your, your sheer intensity, then it's, you know, it, it will actually make those, uh, you know, balls to the wall, um, white knuckle moments, uh, seem all that more impressive and all that more memorable. And that's, that's definitely something that a band like, uh, Cryptopsy understood, and implemented, um, you know, has implemented quite well throughout their career. And, uh, so that was kind of the, one of the things that, uh, initially, um, kind of didn't draw me to the, uh, origin style. Cause it seemed like when I tried to get into them in more of their earlier albums, or at least, you know, I think Echoes of Decimation was like the first album that I tried out. Um, and then Ant Antithesis after that, um, it, it just seemed like there was, uh, it was just too much, you know, balls to the wall type stuff, um, for me to get into. And that's not to say I'm not a, a fan of, you know, grindcore or stuff that, you know, as long as it's a, it's an aspect or an element of the overall, you know, overall song. And it's not just at the forefront. You know, I, I listened to, you know, early Napalm Death back in the day and bands like Nasum and so forth, which, you know, you'll, they'll have like 30 seconds to 60 second songs, which are just kind of just you know, just blast and, you know, just try to be, you know, pure intensity for a, a brief window of time. And that's the song. And eventually that gets pretty damn boring, to be honest, especially when you've, when you've listened to it for, in that style for so much. So I'm not like a massive tech death fan. Um, as, you know, I'm more, I like the progressive, uh, death metal stuff more where it's not, um, focus surely on, you know, uh, you know, 
I guess, uh, technical chop, you know, the chops and, you know, and, you know, and the, how insane and how crazy they can make the arrangements where, you know, I've, there's got to be some musicality going on there and some substance underneath it. You know, otherwise, you know, it's, it doesn't really impress me all that much because there's so many, um, good musicians out there. And the, like I said, the bar keeps getting raised, uh, you know, f over time, com you know, compared to where we were, you know, back in the eighties. Um, uh, and, uh, so, you know, at that, at that point, you know, we've got so many people that are, you know, can play double bass at, in blistering speeds, can, you know, blast beats at, at blistering speeds and single stroke, double stroke rolls, you know, and, you know, they can, you know, every, they're, people are perfecting and, and experimenting with different kinds of blast beats. But, uh, you know, eventually, you know, the, it's the musicality and the composition that ultimately makes a band successful as far as I'm concerned. I, there's bands that play it. I mean, like I said, Faith No More to this day is still my favorite band of all time when it comes to music as a whole. And they certainly aren't playing at breakneck speed, even though there are some kind of crazy arrangements. And so, yeah, ev to, that's to say that, you know, band even that plays it a little bit, you know, sm lower tempo and, you know, is uh, can keep my uh, interest over all these years says something. So music matters. And, uh, with this album, I find that there's not an issue um, with that, which, you know, is, uh, is I'm glad because this is, you know, kind of the first, I, I mean, I'll, I'll definitely be re revisiting and listening to this album more than I would possibly some of their earlier stuff. Because uh, I'm a big fan of uh, John Longstreth's um, drumming, um, especially when I first heard him in uh, the Dim Mock album, uh, Knives of Ice. Um, and I believe he played an Angel Corpse at one point. I don't know if he, I can't remember if he was the... Uh, the original drummer or not. Um, yeah, I guess, I guess he was the original drummer and then Tony Luriano came on, uh, took over and then, yeah, so I guess he was the original because, uh, um, more angel corpse kind of had a, uh, a, uh, you know, they compared them a lot with morbid angels. So I'm assuming it's, uh, more, you know, Pete Sandoval was, uh, a, a, uh, influence on, on John, but John is, uh, his uh, technical prowess is, you know, he's up there in the pantheon of, uh, guys on, on the, on the kit that are just, you know, insanely, um, dex, you know, dexterity is in, insane, uh, stamina is insane, you know, uh, you know, the, you know, their ability to, um, play clean and to basically, you know, not make mistakes and playing these crazy arrangements. So he's definitely up there. Um, and he's, he's an amazing drummer. But like I said, um, the, what what makes it work is that he he gets moments, you know, w that where he can kind of uh, explore uh, along with the guitar player, um, Paul Ryan, who's basically those two guys are the uh, appear to be the only ones from the original lineup that are still there. Um, and uh, so yeah, I mean, there's definitely um, a lot of moments in this on this album where you get away from the, the just the breakneck um, and mix in some uh, other ideas. Uh, especially like I'm, I'll probably link the track uh, Mithridatic or Mithridatic um, as a perfect example of of what I like when uh, you know these you know brutal tech death bands are able to show their you know their musical skills as far as their knowledge of theory and their ability to arrange songs um, because you know you can have a very minimal grasp on um, on musical composition and still you know as long as you have the the, you know, the muscle memory and the, uh, you know, the phys physical ability to play the notes and, you know, at a crazy speeds, you can just kind of mash together a bunch of, you know, uh, different time signatures and just play crazy stuff that, you know, at least on a, from a first appearance might, you know, blow the layman away. But when you look at it and then you realize there's really not much being stated here, but, uh, thankfully, like I said, that's not the case with these guys. And I think that's probably, uh, uh, you know, a, an uh, example of them maturing as musicians. I mean, they started out, their first album was released in 2000. Um, so yeah, almost, you know, they probably were doing demos and um, stuff. And obviously John was playing with Angel Corpse uh, in the 90s. So, you know, that's 20, 20 plus years of uh, of musical experience and knowledge gained. So I'm glad to, to be able to find these um, kind of tech death band uh, albums that uh, do appeal to my uh, need for, you know, some mu musicality and, and good composition. And that, so, yeah, I'll link Mithridatic as an example, um, or, you know, on my minds, or put it on minds.com. And, uh, of course, on YouTube, you guys can look it right up. I'm sure it's linked there. And uh, also Truth Slayer is one, I'll, which is a track right after it, which is, you know, I think it's only like a little over two minutes, but 
like I said, you're going to, if you, those of you that like origin because you just like, um, grind core death, you know, tech death stuff and you don't really care as long as it's just as fast and crazy and intense, then you're, and you're an origin fan already. You're not going to need my stamp of approval, uh, to, uh, check this band out. Just go ahead and buy the album and, uh, you'll enjoy it. And, the, I'll let you know that the interesting was that it kind of leaves the album at you know the end of the album tailing off you know before the cover track so you know the track ninth track unequivocal is uh, about ten under ten minutes but it you know the first half is basically is the very insane intense kind of grindy stuff and then the the latter half um, is really more kind of a a you know a building up of a, a more epic kind of. Uh, Almost not. I don't want to say power metal type sound, but it's got that kind of epicness to it, that kind of more uplifting, epic kind of vibe to it. That it builds over that remainder of time, um, even though you know John's playing, you know, some really you know brutal, you know, you know percussive stuff um, as the guitar part is 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 kind of building and building and building. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a it's it. The vibe is different. It, it's it, it's almost like you know you when you listen to death metal, it's almost more kind of grim and and ugly and but this kind of leaves the album off almost kind of more of a you know uplifting kind of uh you know i guess kind of way more uh, you know epic and uplifting like you would expect from like power metal and whatnot but the of course the arrangements aren't typical power metal but it, it's a good way to, to end the album i was surprised i like that that they're not afraid to because that cause kind of becomes the issue with some of these bands is like they're afraid to get into more of the melodic and the more of the uh I don't know, more uh, chill out moments type things because they feel like it's, oh, we're going to lose our intensity and, you know, that's what death metal is all about, blah, blah, blah. But uh, yeah, definitely a album I recommend for those that like um, extreme metal uh, and those that are haven't gotten into the more technical, proggy aspects of extreme metal. So yeah, definitely uh, check this out. And uh, I'm sure that uh, you'll enjoy it quite a bit. Um, this is uh, Origins. Uh, let's see how many albums they got here. So this is their seventh studio album. So quite a bit of material out there. And I'm, I might have to go back and revisit some of the previous uh, cat, or previous uh, albums and, and um, give them another chance and see maybe if I prejudged them too much. Uh, Maybe there are some uh, better moments back there that I just weren't, I missed. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, Origin Unparalleled Universe. It's out on Nuclear Blast, of course. And uh, yeah, go pick yourself up a copy. You will not be disappointed. All right, guys, I'll be back with an album review um, pretty soon. I got a few more uh, lined up to listen to, and uh, I'll uh, put them up when I'm all finished. Take it easy.